بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سہیل احمد آئی ایم ایچ او ڈی آف سائیکیٹری اینڈ بیہیویرل سائنسز ایف آر پی ایم سی ٹوڈے از اے لیکچر از آن دا ٹاپک آف سوئسائڈ اینڈ پیرا سوئسائڈ ایز وی لرن ان دا پریویس لیکچر آف دا ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا مینٹل ہیلتھ ایشوز آف دا کمیونٹی دا سوئسائڈ and parasuicide is an important behavioral issue in our society and the community. Being a mental health uh, professional, I am taking this lecture of suicide and attempted suicide uh, which is of the syllabus of the uh, community medicine. Well, uh, the learn learning objectives of uh, this session which we need to achieve at the end of this Uh, session that uh, are, are number one the student should be able to describe the concept of suicide and parasuicide number two he or she should be able to discuss the prevalence of suicide and parasuicide should be able to identify the factors leading to suicidal acts should be able to identify the population at risk in the community for attempting suicide should be able to describe the guidelines for management of cases of attempted self-harm and should be able to discuss the strategies for prevention of suicide in the community well what is the act of suicide and attempted suicide in uh, simply the suicide means killing oneself or it is an intentional self inflicted death for definition purpose the suicide is defined as an act with a fatal outcome that is deliberately initiated and performed by the person in the knowledge or or, or expectation of its fatal outcome attempted suicide simply means attempting to cut, kill oneself or it may be defined as an incomplete act of self harm with an intention to kill himself or herself which do not result into death well to understand the state of mind of a suicidal patient first we need to uh, know we need to make sure that uh, if not all then majority of the population majority of the people in a community want to live nobody wants to die but in some individuals in certain circumstances the state of mind is, is so much disturbed that the patient wants to kill himself or herself so what is this is this state of mind it reflects that the person is mentally severely depressed he is extremely frustrated with a feeling of hopelessness helplessness and worthlessness hopelessness means there is no hope for himself in the future helplessness means he is all alone and there is no help which is being given the which is being provided to him and worthlessness means that he feels that he has got no worth in this uh, uh, environment in this society and he is not he is no more required so he sees no other option except killing himself or herself he feels that he or she is a burden to others burden to the society the uh, burden to people around him his relatives his friends in the community and in desperation Uh, see death as a way to escape his overwhelming pain and anguish so much disturb you know that he sees no other way no other way of uh, getting a solution of his his problem the suicidal state of mind uh, was described by someone as a constricted filled with a sense of self hatred rejection guilt unbearable frustration 
and hopelessness. So this reflects the mind of a person who wants to kill himself while the majority of us wants to live. So this states reflect the severity of the problem. In this slide, we will try to find out the causes of this act of suicide. Very important group of uh, the causes is the suicide as it is the result of underlying psychiatric illnesses, untreated psychiatric illnesses. And what are those uh, uh, common illnesses which can lead to suicidal act? Number one is the depression or depressive disorder. Number two is the bipolar mood disorder. Number three is the drug dependence or substance abuse. Number four is schizophrenia and its related disorders. Number five is organic psychiatric disorders like dementia. And number six is the personality disorder. Of course, we will talk about these, these illnesses in detail uh, when uh, the uh, component of the um, uh, training in uh, psychiatry uh, you would come across uh, in your clinical training we, we, we would learn about these psychiatric illnesses well the depression is a, the most common psychiatric illness associated with the suicidal behavior and we learned in the previous lecture of mental health issues of community that depression is going to be the uh, most important clinical morbidity uh, in the year 2030 as stated by the WHO. Well, the other important factor which may lead uh, to the attempted suicide or act of suicide is the exposure to a severely stressful life event in a person with no established psychiatric illnesses. First, we talked about the established psychiatric illnesses, but this group has got no established psychiatric illnesses, but is exposed to severely stressful life event. And these stressful life events which can give rise, which can later on result into uh, uh, the extreme frustration leading to the societal act, the examples of these stressful life events are death of the spouse or a loved one in the life of the person, divorce or separation, significant sudden financial loss or prolonged financial difficulties over a period of time, failure in the love affair, failure in exams, sudden loss of job or unemployment, extremely humiliating event and sudden discovery of a fatal illness or chronic debilita debilitating physical illness. Well, we need to know that how common is this act of suicide or attempted suicide is in our environment. A very important factor related to the epidemiology is that accurate statistics about suicide are difficult to be obtained because in a good number of cases uh, the act is not correctly reported by the concerned by family and the facts are concealed because this method of dying is not socially acceptable so the people try to conceal this this act act of suicide and sometimes they, they, they and they make all their efforts to not not to report not to notify not to tell other people that the person has died because of the suicide so because of that accurate statistics sometimes are difficult to be obtained but anyway whatever we have obtained the WHO shows this the reference is given uh, in the, uh, at the bottom uh, the, this uh, mm, website says that uh, almost 800,000 people all over the world die of suicide every year. 800,000 people all over the world die of suicide every year. So the global mortality rate which was mentioned is 10.5 per 100,000 people year population per year 
or you can say that it is one death every 40 seconds. While continuing to talk about the epidemiological factors of suicide, it was reported that suicide attempt rate has always been higher among the people uh, between the age of 25 and 44 years, while in some uh, persons with uh, elderly age also the suicide rate was found higher. As far as the gender is concerned, the rate of suicide is almost universally higher among men as compared to the women by an aggregate ratio of 3 is to 1. And but the, as far as the attempted suicide is concerned, then the more females were reported as compared to the males. So the more males than females commit suicide, but more females than males attempt suicide. As far as the geographical distribution is concerned, the countries where suicide rate was uh, found significantly higher, that is more than 50 per 100,000, includes Japan, Russian Federation, Slovenia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan and Hungary. Uh, generally in Islamic countries as compared to the other countries, the suicide rate was found um, comparatively less probably because of the religious factors which we talk about in later in the other slides. Well we need to uh, keep in mind the those higher risk groups which are liable or susceptible to attempt suicide in our community. So what are those groups? People with established psychotic illnesses including substance abusers, the elderly persons especially divorcee, separated or who lost their spouses, people with chronic or debilitating or incurable physical illnesses, prisoners, especially the war prisoners. In social classes 1 and 5, two extremes, the suicide rate was found higher. People with poor coping strategies to stressful circumstances may lead to attempt suicide. As far as the professions are concerned, is our profession is concerned, uh, in some profession it is found higher. In the doctors also the suicide rate or attempted suicide was found higher. They are more susceptible due to the stressful life they live all of their uh, you know period uh, they are in, uh, doctors are in extreme stress and also the other factor is the easy av availability of the drugs of course the suicide rate is uh, uh, found was found higher in unemployed than the employed persons well it is interesting but unfortunate to know that although suicide or attempted suicide is not a crime because a person is not harming some other per other person but it is still considered as an offense in the Pakistan Penal Code till now and the section 325 of the Pakistan Penal, Co Penal Code relates to the uh, uh, suicide as a punishable act. It means that the person attempting suicide is liable to be prosecuted and punished under law. This is strange but it is still there in the Pakistan Penal Code and attempts are being made to, to, to remove this uh, section. Uh, Pakistan Psychiatric Society and Mental Health Authorities are trying to remove this uh, section. But simult simultaneously in 2001 new mental health ordinance was passed and implemented and according to this new mental health ordinance uh, which is now the part of the constitution, it is stated that a person attempting suicide needs a psychiatric assessment and treatment rather than punishment. So you can say that in the same constitution two sections or two laws are there which oppose each other. Well the attempts are being made to remove, to delete to, uh, uh, the section 325 which 
which which uh, considers that uh, suicide is a punishable act now we talk about the religious aspect of su suicide the act of suicide is forbidden in different religions and it is strictly forbidden in islam as you see in the second surah surah bakra the verse number 195 it is clearly written wala tulku wala tulku bi aidikum illa tahlukat that is don't kill yourself with your own hands it clearly forbidden a person to kill himself or herself uh in al maida verse uh, number 32 it is said that uh, a, it uh, a person kills another person it means that he killed all mankind and if anyone saved a life of another person it would be as if he saved all mankind well at another place in our holy book that is quran uh, in surah nisa uh, it is uh, it was mentioned that uh, you should not kill yourself the translation is a iman walo tum aapas mein ek dusre ka maal na hak na khao magar ye ki aapas ki raza mandi se tijarat karo aur tum apne aap ko qatl na karo beshak allah tum par bahut rehm karne wala hai so in our holy book of quran it is clearly mentioned more than at more than one place that uh, suicide is not allowed in the religion well to mention another place in the same surah surah nisa uh, it is written i mean the translation of the ayah uh, aur apne aap ko qatl na karo yakeen mano ki allah tumhare upar meherban hai jo shaz zulm aur ziyadati ke sath aisa karega उसको हम जरूर आग में झोंकेंगे और ये अल्लाह के लिए कोई मुश्किल काम नहीं तो अगेन कुरान एम्फोसाइज दैट किलिंग वन सेल्फ ओन इज नॉट एन एक्ट टू बी एक्सेप्टेबल इन द रिलीजन वेल नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सोशल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द सोसाइट that is how the society react to the bereaved family or to the cases of attempted suicide those who committed suicide they are gone they are no more in this world but their family members are required to see a lot of pressures and those who have attempted suicide but are saved again they face the same situation so what is this situation a suicide is forbidden in religion the death by suicide does not in general create a sympathetic response people do not usually do the sympathy to the uh, survivors or to the person who uh, who was saved by uh, from by the act of attempted suicide sometimes the sympathies may be expressed from some corners especially when suicide is the result of a severely stressful event in those cases the people feel that he was he was uh, although it was not an acceptable act but his, his circumstances were so painful that he had no other choice the relatives of the deceased uh, person uh, face marked embarrassment and sometimes painful inquiries regarding events which led to suicide or attempted suicide after the death whenever they are approached by the friends the families the neighbors of course they they, they ask about the cause of the death the circumstances which led to the suicide and it is so painful to discuss to describe all these things to these people for the family members so relatives and of the victims or the survivors are also likely to face the police and the law enforcement agencies uh, because as i mentioned earlier uh, that uh, these cases of suicide or attempted suicide are still treated as a medical legal cases and a, a section of the pakistan penal code considers that suicide or attempted suicide is a uh, it is an act which is liable to be punished of prosecuted
Well, the common methods which were found to be used by the people who attempted to commit suicide in our uh, environment or community are very common is the hanging mostly by the ceiling fan, self-poisoning by using drugs like insecticides, sedatives and tranquilizers, jumping from height, jumping in front of a moving, moving vehicle or train, shooting themselves by pistol, revolver or other weapon, burning themselves by the fire and drowning. These are uh, were the common methods which are found uh, to be used by the person attempting or uh, suicide or killing themselves. Talk about the management of patients with suicidal intent. And for the management of these patients, first we have to identify of this kind of cases uh, with suicidal intent in our community. So patients, family members, relatives, neighbors, friends and working colleagues can identify such cases. And important clues which are given are present in this risky population who are liable, who are susceptible to commit suicide are Number one, the verbal expression of suicidal intent or threat to the people around him. A person expressing to his friend, to family member that I want to die, it should be taken seriously. It should not be ignored. This is the one a clue which uh, can uh, help to identify these cases and so, so that we can timely manage to prevent suicide. Past history of suicidal, um, uh, suicidal attempts is another uh, important factor uh, which it makes the person susceptible to attempt suicide again. The, all those cases with past history of suicidal attempt should be taken seriously and should be monitored and should be pro provided treatment and help. Family, family history of suicidal attempt is another factor which should be taken into consideration because uh, uh, like many illnesses, many problems, the suicidal, uh, the, the phenomena of suicide may also be uh, sometimes genetic in origin. In some families it is more reported than the other families. So if a person has got a strong family history of suicidal attempt because of psychiatric illness or other factors, then he should be uh, uh, monitored or seen uh, seriously about the possible attempts. And if the person is, is, is making or preparing a documentary evidence supporting suicidal intent like making a will or writing a letter, uh, as he knows that after writing a will or a letter he has got all the plans to kill himself. So if we find any such document uh, in the position of a person we should take uh, consider it very is a, a very serious matter and with, uh, I mean we should try to find and uh, monitor and provide help to this person who can later on uh, commit suicide. Well, all those persons or patients who are liable to, who are susceptible to attempt suicide can also be identified in the clinical setting by the family physicians or general practitioners because these are the people who initially come across with uh, all kind of patients and later on these patients they are referred to the specialist or tertiary healthcare facilities. So the family physicians or general practitioners can identify and the patients with suicidal intent by careful history taking and proper mental state assessment in, in patients with high societal risk and, and they may also require to interview to talk to the caregivers of those patients uh, so that uh, a, a proper diagnosis can be made and the patient may be referred to the mental health uh, professionals for, for further management. But in the hospital setting, the management of patients with suicidal intent or attempted suicide are treated with a certain plan which includes number one, admission to a psychiatric care facility with proper secured arrangements where psychiatric nursing care is available and any access to the suicidal means is denied and it is made sure that the patient were admitted in this, uh, this kind of facility they, have, they should get no opportunity to harm themselves. Then the treatment of underlying cause which may be a psychiatric illness, which may be a social cause, it should be addressed by 
you know, the uh, proper the required drug therapy, that is pharmacotherapy, and sometimes any, any specific method of treatment is psychiatry, which is called electroconvulsive therapy, uh, is used in patients with depression having the suicidal intent. The sessions of psychotherapy are sometimes uh, very much helpful to those patients with the attempted suicide having the environmental stresses and deficient uh, uh, coping strategies. And of course, the area of social supported rehabilitation is badly needed in those patients who are initially treated and require support by the society. As prevention aspect is better than the cure, so the prevention of suicide of societal act in the community is very important area. It can be achieved by timely identification of psychiatric illnesses by healthcare professionals and social workers, especially in the susceptible persons, then conducting the seminar sessions for creating awareness about stress coping strategies and general psychiatric problems and common psychiatric illnesses. Another area which needs to be uh, emphasized is availability of suicide prevention helpline round the clock for the people who are in extreme pain, frustration and hopelessness and require support. They can call to this helpline and they can get, uh, get some kind of support which may help them to uh, postpone or to cancel uh, the idea uh, of attempted suicide. Effective use of print media, electronic media and social media for creating awareness for above mentioned measures is required. Uh, so that uh, the prevention strategies may be successful. And uh, in, the, in the last slide, briefly we will talk about the suicide bombing. Uh, suicide bombing explosion is committing suicide with definite aims. A person doing the suicide bombing has got definite aims in his mind. The aim is to sacrifice one's own life for causing maximum possible destruction to the target. And the target may be a specific person or any crowded place or any installation. And the person involved, the person is involved in the suicide bombing, he know that he is going to be killed. But his aim and target is very important for him for, him for many reasons. The person involved in the societal bombing may, uh, may belong to the religious extremist groups who were probably brainwashed and guaranteed by their leaders to get a place in paradise after death. However, no religion uh, encourages this act of self-destruction with killing of other people. Other motives for society bombing may be taking revenge uh, because of some personal loss. Uh, huge monetary and also some some uh, sometimes huge monetary gains for the survivors but this act of suicide bombing should always be condemned should always be dealt accordingly by the strict enforcement of the law